Welcome to the video for Module 10's lab from course 10981. This lab is going to look at advanced system center integration. So the key points here, we're going to investigate using operations manager to detect performance problems. Uh, so we're going to focus on memory issues, but other problems would be equally capable. And then we're actually going to look at combining operations manager with orchestrator to actually resolve those problems when the IT administrator wants those problems to be resolved. So we're going to start off by loading the operations manager console. So as the console just finishes loading, the first thing we need to do is get some agents deployed. So we'll switch down to the administration panel, discovery wizard to go and deploy some agents. We'll just right click and then actually use the discovery wizard to deploy some agents. So obviously Windows computers we we'll choose advanced discovery and then we'll just browse for the machines in Active Directory. So we're just going to select the computer we want to deploy an agent to. Specify credentials which have got permission to install software on that machine. Press the Discover button. So what the Discover button does is it goes off and confirms the machine you want doesn't have an agent on it. It also confirms that the machine has a valid DNS record. Just so just confirm the folder where we want to install the agent and the user account that we want the agent to run under. So we'll run as local system and this will start the deployment process which will take a couple of moments. So we're just waiting for the agent. So we'll just close that box, go into the pending management and we can actually see the library server sitting there as part of the agent deployment. If the agent deployment failed, it would stay there for a bit and we could see why. But if we missed that screen, you could go to the monitoring page and actually look at the alert section and that would then tell you again why the installation actually failed. So obviously we're going to be waiting for the, the agent to appear in the agent manage section, which you can now see that it's there. And it currently has a status of not monitored. So again, we just need to wait for it to report in, having downloaded the configuration, and tell us that it's either healthy, it's got a warning state, there's a small issue, or it's got a critical condition. So wait for that status to come through. So we're just waiting for the agent to go healthy. There we go. So what we can now do is we can now start to make sure that all the data has been refreshed. So for example, if we come to the monitoring panel and we come down to the Microsoft Windows Server on the left hand side, we can start to look at the sort of health and state of the system. So we go to server state and we can see LUN-LS1 is in a healthy condition. So all's looking quite good with our machine at this precise moment. So again, as part of establishing our test scenario, we need to be able to end up in a situation where we're going to cause a problem. So what we're going to do is we're just going to connect across to the LUN LS1 machine and we're actually going to get the machine to sort of overcommit its memory. So we're going to do this in a very simple way just by using an application which is just going to use large amounts of memory. So we're just going to connect to LUN LS1. We'll sign into the machine and then we'll actually use the paint application and just basically create an enormous uh, paint canvas which will just cause it to have to allocate large amounts of memory far more than is in the machine. The machine doesn't have much so we should see it trigger the threshold pretty quickly. So we're signed into the LUN LS1 system so we're just going to go to the Windows Start screen and we'll just load paint. Hopefully this won't take too long to load up Here we go. So here's the paint application. So I'm just going to open up Task Manager so we can actually see the behavior in Task Manager as well. So we can currently see that the system's using about 9, 0.9 of a gigabyte of its 2 gigabytes of memory. Okay. So all we're going to do is just go to the size and redraw and we're actually going to increase the canvas. You can see the scroll bars have changed a little bit and you can actually see the memory utilization has gone up a little bit as well. So not dramatically at this precise moment. So what we'll do is we'll use that again 
and we'll go and grow the canvas again. So this time we're going to grow it by 100% over the size that we've got. So as you can see, I've got an hourglass here, and the, the, so the system's actually now performing a lot slower as it's trying to sort of allocate the memory for this giant canvas. And again, you see the scroll bars haven't done an awful lot. So things are sort of running much, much slower now on this particular machine. Hopefully we should be able to see, though, this overcommitment of memory. So we'll give it a few seconds. So with Task Manager fired up now, you can actually see that we've actually got um, 2.1 gigabytes in use of 2.4 gigabytes available, but that's also the page file as well. So we've actually overcommitted the memory that's in the system quite, quite significantly. So if we switch back to Operations Manager, you can actually see here we've now actually got a memory warning. So actually identifying the fact that this system is overcommitted from a memory point of view. So we can actually see quite clearly that we actually have a, a problem with the system. You don't get much detail in this particular alert because of the simplicity of, of, of the actual alert, just telling us that effectively we've overcommitted the available megabytes. Okay. So we can see we've got our alert actually being generated at this precise moment. Just again exploring it using the Health Explorer view just to give us an alternative view and the fact we can see that we was healthy and then we went into a critical state. So if we go into the administration panel, what we're actually going to do is we're going to change the way this is going to behave a little bit. So we want to have some form of automated remediation in these scenarios, but we don't want the system just to go rushing out and make changes to VMs. What we actually want to do is we want to drive it through um, the data center administrator's interactions. So we're going to create a new resolution state, which we're going to call increased VM memory. And we're going to give it a, a unique ID. The number doesn't really matter in, in our instance. And what that would allow is the data center administrators to actually select an alert and, and set that resolution state. We're then actually going to use System Center Orchestrator to detect that condition and then actually go and change the memory that the virtual machine is actually con consuming and hopefully mitigate the performance conditions that we're experiencing through, through the lack of memory. So that's what we're hoping to do. So if we just go and look at the hardware configuration for the virtual machine at the moment, we can actually see it's configured for static memory and we need to sort of make that mem system change. And obviously with static memory, today in Hyper-V, then we do need to obviously restart the machine to be able to make that change. And again, we're just showing the process. Obviously with subsequent versions, these sorts of changes could be made while the machine's running. And obviously if it was using dynamic memory, then we'd be able to do that as well. So we're going to hit the increase VM memory. So we've changed the resolution state from being new to increase VM memory. And that should actually cause, or will cause, our automated process to, to run. So we're just going across into the Orchestrator Runbook Designer application. And, and the way we've actually written this runbook is it's going to be sort of interactive so that we can see what's going on. So into the Orchestrator console, go to the VMM folder, and we can actually see our runbook here. So actually we're using the get alert, and we're looking for the increase VM memory resolution state. So in reality, you might use a monitor object here, which actually would automatically detect the increased VM memory. But we just want to walk through this process so we can see exactly what happens. We've then got um, uh, a get VM object, which actually allows us to get the configuration of the virtual machine in question. So what it allows us to do is to take the virtual machine name from the get alert and we can then actually use that to get the actual virtual machine details. So we can, for example, find out how much memory it's got, those sort of things. So we could potentially, not that this run book does this, actually increase the memory by a certain percentage if we wanted to. This takes a, a few seconds to load, as you can see, just purely because it's an extension for VMM. So it's actually going out and connecting to Virtual Machine Manager. So you see we're just reading the name from the get alert, so the NetBars computer name. Okay. And we're then taking that piece of information and we're then using it to shut the virtual machine down. Okay. Notice we're using the VM ID just to make sure in case you've got VMs with the same names don't have any conflicts. We're then making a configuration change to update the memory. We're then actually starting the VM back up. So we're just going to run this. 
and this will take a few seconds to actually run and obviously a big part of the amount of time it takes is going to be dependent on how long it actually takes to shut down and start up the virtual machine but we should see some activity occurring in the virtual machine manager as well so we've run, started the run book so the run book's now to operations manager it's actually connecting to find out if there's any alerts that meet the criteria and then we'll start to sort of work our way along so hopefully we'll find the alert discover the extended details about the virtual machine okay so we can see we've actually found the alert now and we're now in the point where we're sort of getting the virtualization. So again, we've got to authenticate against VMM. So there's a couple of processes that have got to happen here. And if you think about how long the VMM console takes to load, some of that time is going to be used by this object. So once this has completed, we should then actually start to see the virtual machine shutting down. So we should see that change in the VMM console so the virtual machine should go from the running state to the shutting down state there we go the stopping state so we can see we've moved on to the next phase once the virtual machine is completed we'll then actually go and update the configuration of the virtual machine so we will reach in and actually change the uh, memory settings okay and then once the uh, memory settings have been changed we will then actually go and obviously start the virtual machine again so we're just coming to the point where the VM is stopped. We've now updated the VM and now we're now switching the VM back on. So we've actually now completed the memory changes for the VM hopefully. So we can see that activity is actually finished. If we look at the log history we can see that we've gone through all of the steps and it seems to have completed successfully. So our remediation steps all, all seem to have worked. If we go and have a look at the properties for the virtual machine and then actually come into the memory settings we should actually see again the memory has actually been increased in the, to the virtual machine to 2 gigabytes. If we connect to the virtual machine we should hopefully be able to see those changes reflected in the virtual machine as well so hopefully if we just go and uh, sign into the virtual machine so type in the password just wait for the desktop to appear to see that the virtual machine is back and if we just go across to task manager look at the performance tab you should see that we've got that sort of increase in memory of two gigabytes now compared to the one gigabyte we had before that completes the video for module 10 looking at actually using orchestrator and operations manager ha to, to handle our environment it is important to remember some of the things we saw can be far more automated very easily to give you that dynamic data center experience